First, you need to know the different parts that make up your spore kite, starting with the nose, the upper spreader, the spine, the center teeth, the lower spreaders, the standoffs which give shape to the cell, the outhaul bridle leg, the inhaul bridle leg, the trailing edge, and the keel, the cheat line, the leading edge, and one of four spreader connectors. Remove kite from its protective sleeve and set loose spars to one side. Unfold the kite with the exposed spine away from you. You should see the center tee and bridle facing you. Untangle bridle lines and lay kite in front of you. Insert lower spreaders into the center tee, ensuring that the bridle lines from the spine are underneath them. Insert the other ends of the lower spreader firmly and fully into the lower spreader connectors, and then insert the standoff connectors located on the lower spreaders, making sure that your bridle line is out of the way and free. Assemble the upper spreader and once again check that the bridle comes off all points evenly. By holding the bridle connection point and pulling the bridle down into the outside, you can check that the bridle is adjusted correctly. More on bridle adjustments at the end of this video. There are four crucial positions to learn, starting with neutral, which is both arms bent at 90 degrees, your hands comfortably in front of you. Push, return to neutral, pull, return to neutral, pull back extended, and return to neutral position. Practice movements with one hand at a time while the other remains in a neutral position. The wind window is a designated area in which the kite will fly. This area is directly downwind in approximately 140 degrees in front of you. This area will swell and shrink, of course, depending on the force of the wind. It is very important to learn and understand the wind window. The lighter shaded area in the middle of the window is called the power zone. Your kite will fly faster and probably pull harder in this area. The darker shade represents the edges where the wind has less effect on your kite and is used for stalling your kite. The center power zone and top edge of the window is the first thing you will learn because we will launch in the center and fly to the top of the wind window and stall. The large head loop is used to attach the fly lines to the bridle of the kite. Hold each side of the loop between thumb and forefinger with thumb being farther away from you as shown. Simply rotate four fingers forward causing the loop to loop on itself. Place the lark's head loop over the attachment point of the bridle and tighten. The white line goes to the right side of the bridle. The left or black line goes to the left side of the bridle. Place kite downwind in the middle of the wind window and unwind your fly lines from the winder. Hold winder with the fly straps in one hand and unwind. Use your other hand to guide the lines off of the winder as shown. When the lines are completely unwound, place winder in your back pocket and check that there are no tangles in the line. Do not walk up to the kite with your straps in your hand. Always keep your lines straight to avoid tangles. For the stake method, you can place a stake in the ground and loop your fly straps around the stake and unwind downwind then attach your lines to the kite. Ensure that you tilt the kite back so it does not catch air in the sail and launch before you are ready. When you are finished, there are two ways to wind up your lines. Either the hand over hand method or the figure eight method. Both work. Safety first. Never fly your kites in thunderstorms, near traffic, people, pets, or winds above your ability. Most kites will fly between 6 and 15 miles per hour unless they are a special ultralight. The best winds for your first flight are between 6 and 10 miles per hour. A new pilot should never, ever try to fly of higher than 15 miles per hour their first time out. Mm -hmm. 
Ask your helper to stand downwind and loosely hold the kite from behind. When you are both ready, have them release the kite as you pull on both lines. Remember to return both hands to neutral position. As long as you keep your hands at neutral, the kite will fly straight up to the top of the window. Place kite downwind from you. Make sure your lines are untangled. You will be launching and flying right up the middle of the wind window. Look behind you and ensure there is nothing to trip over. With both hands extended in front of you, pull both hands at the same time back near your waist and as the kite launches, gradually return hands back to the neutral position. If your lines are the same length and you pull your hands back and then return to neutral at the same time, the kite will fly directly straight up, up to the top of the edge of the window and stall, waiting for your next command. Do not move your hands out to your sides or over your head. You will lose control of the kite and crash. Remember to practice your hand positioning lesson. After launching, pull left line back just a little and the kite will start to go to the left. Then return left hand to neutral. Pull right line back just a little and the kite will fly to the right. Return right hand to neutral. This is called the window search. Concentrate on your hand positioning. Use very small hand movements, starting from and returning to your neutral hand positions. Once you can control the kite to the left and to the right at the very top of the window, maintain a very small pull movement and slowly fly down the left side until the kite lands on its leading edge. With the kite at the top of the window, using a one-handed pull turn, pull one hand back about five to eight inches from neutral, keeping the other hand at neutral, and the kite will rotate that direction. After it completes more than half of the circle, move your pull hand back towards neutral position. Remember that the kite flies in the direction of the nose, so always watch the nose of the kite. Only move one hand at a time. This lesson will increase your confidence and control. Pull with one hand to start rotation, but this time, when the nose points to the side, return pull hand to neutral. Remember that the kite flies in the direction of the nose and that you are controlling where it goes. If you become confused, go back to pull circles at the top of the window, pull right, kite rotates to the right, pull left, kite rotates to the left, and then try again. Practice with both your left and right hand and keep the altitude of the kite high in the beginning to avoid ground crashes. After you master flying side to side, the same exact movement is used to fly up and down. Do not panic as you get close to the ground. Have confidence in your half turns and maintain correct hand positioning. After learning half circles, you can now fly the full window, side to side and up and down. Concentrate on making your line straight between turns. This is called straight tracking. As you know, pulling left causes the kite to fly left. Pushing with the left hand will cause the kite to turn to the right, and pushing right will cause the kite to rotate to the left. Remember to move one hand at a time while the other stays at neutral. Learning to push circle will prepare you for upcoming lessons. Maintain a forward push will cause the kite to spin. It will continue to spin until you return your hand to the neutral position. The trick is to do it quickly at the exact time the nose is pointing up. Pointing down will cause you to crash. As you spin, your lines cross and wrap. By now, you will be able to feel that there are too many wraps in the line. Simply fly 10 turns in one direction. If it feels like it is getting tighter, fly 20 in the other. Flying in higher winds with many line wraps will cause your lines to break. For the edge landing, fly kite to the window's edge and follow the edge down to the ground and gently land kite on its leading edge. The edge launch is explained later in this video. Again, follow the left edge of the window towards the ground, but this time initiate a half pull turn with your right hand. As the kite starts to turn, walk forward to reduce the air pressure on the kite for the landing. This landing is demonstrated on the left side of the window. For the right side, you would use your left hand or inside hand, but always the inside wing hand. Now that you can fly a dual-line sport kite, you will want to teach others, and here's how. 
Pass unwrapped lines to the student, kite at top of the window center. Get behind them so you can control their hands. Teach them arm positioning, elbows bent at 90 degrees at their sides, hands in front of them. Show them a little flying and then explain neutral. All moves start from neutral. Pull left, kite flies left, pull right, kite flies right. Only move one hand at a time. Sound familiar? When you see that they are starting to learn, allow them to fly on their own until they crash. Now explain the launch and allow them to try it. Normally, new flyers pull too hard or do not keep their hands together, resulting in a crash. Immediately take the lines or relaunch the kite for them. This will keep the lesson moving along. Always try to give the new flyer encouragement and applaud them when they are doing well. Continue to help them until they need less and less help. Some people learn more quickly than others, and you may want to continue to help them. Looks like Jason here is starting to get the hang of it. Congratulations, Jason. You are now a sport kite flyer. It only takes a little time and a little practice, and believe me, it's a lot of fun watching a new flyer get the hang of it. This is also a good time to recommend this video, Flight School Basic Training by Dodd Gross. Thanks for helping grow the sport.